This is the second video in our three-part series on the Mercury 3 fully self-contained LDMOS high-frequency linear amplifier. We will assemble the Mercury 3 LDMOS high-frequency linear amplifier with components supplied by the designer of the amp, KM3KM. Please visit the designer's website at km3km.com. We'll perform the assembly step-by-step -step following this detailed guide supplied when you purchase the components. Additional resources are available on KM3KM's website and YouTube channel. Please see the links provided below. In this video, we'll refer to KM3KM's Mercury 35 welds video to assure the quality, integrity, and continuity of the solder joints. Let's take a look at step one in the manual and get to work. Okay, the first step here is to work on the antenna switchboard and install three standoffs. And that's what they look like right there. And in the bag of standoff hardware, there's three long standoffs, and those are the 20, mil 20 millimeter standoffs that we're going to use. Additionally, in the assembly guide, it says to make sure that you're operating in a static protected area, and this is all anti static matting, and I have my ground strap on. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take the antenna switchboard out and install those standoffs per the instructions. The standoffs are on. There's one on the top left. There's one on the bottom in the middle. And there's one on the top right. The next step here is the installation of the SO239s and the female RCA jacks. So we're going to dig out four SO239s and the two RCA jacks and we're going to install those in the back of the case just as KM3KM shows us right here. So first let's get into the hardware bag and get the connectors. Here's the four SO239s. There's the mounting hardware, 4 by 40 half inch and two female RCA jacks and we're going to install those in the case now. Here's the back of the case where the SO239s and the RCA connectors go. So let's get those installed here. This is what it looks like with all the connectors on. Uh, what I did was I chemically cleaned the side of the connector that actually makes contact with the case as well as I cleaned the inside of the case. Um, Came out everything. Nice. And uh, be careful when you crank down on the nut on the RCA jacks because I did break one of those. However, I did have... The next step is to attach the coax to the antenna control board. And the first piece is the 6.5 inch length of the RG316. It's this piece right here, 6.5 inches long, pretty thin. And that's going to solder onto the contacts that says two power unit in this orientation. Here's the piece of RG316 soldered onto the antenna control board and it passes the continuity check. Next we have the 15 and a half inch piece of RG142 and that's going to go to these contacts that say from low pass filter. Okay, now we have the RG316 and the RG142 both soldered on. On to the next step. The next step here is to take the antenna control board and install it in the case over the SO239 and the RCA jacks and use the nuts to secure it in place. This is what it looks like with the antenna control board installed. It's important to make sure that everything is tight before you put that in because once it's in you're committed. And the next step here is to solder up all the SO239s to the board and also the RCA jacks. So here's the board with everything soldered up. Did the continuity and the short tests. And everything checks out good. 
Okay, the next step is to connect the case fan connector onto the board as well as the IDC antenna connector cable. So let's go hook those up. Okay, we installed the fan and the ribbon cable. And the next thing we're going to do is put on the shield. Here's the installed shield. The small piece of coax comes out on the bottom left. And the large piece of coax, you want to make sure that you route that such that it doesn't touch the Antenna 3 SO239. Then a large piece of coax comes out on the top right. And the fan and the ribbon connector come out on the bottom right. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install the pull power unit assembly. And that is held in place with three cap screws. Let's go ahead and put that inside the case underneath the antenna. So here we are with the power unit installed. And there's three cap screws. One goes in from the bottom. And then we got two right here on the back. Here are the fans installed. You can see the hub of the fans clearly from the back. And on the side of the fans is actually arrows that show the direction of airflow. So you want the air coming in here and going to the back of the case. You want it to blow through the heat sinks. So what I did was I used some isopropyl and I cleaned off the bottom of the case here where the adhesive strip goes. I did it on both sides. Uh, clean off the anodizing and let it dry for a couple of minutes. And then when you peel the backing off the strip, you push the fan down, you put your hand... Okay, the next step is to take the small piece of coax, the RG316 that comes onto the left-hand side of the antenna board assembly, and that gets tied down on the power amp board right next to this resistor network. And there's the tie point right there. On the resistor network, I'm going to put a little tiny heat sink on there to make sure we don't get any heat induced into the resistor network because I don't want to take a chance of damaging that. Okay, here's the RG316, comes out the left lower side of the board, comes up here and gets soldered down to that resistor network input. And I just use a little heat sink there to make sure no heat gets into it. I solder pretty quick, but I put it on there anyways just to make sure. Okay, now we're on the bottom of page 13, and they're talking about the 12-inch piece of RG142 connecting from RF out on the power board and that piece of coax actually goes to RF in on the low pass filter board. This is going to be the uh, trap. So we're going to solder one side of the trap onto the RF out right now. So there's the trap and it solders onto right there. So here we have the trap tied to RF out on the made power unit board. There it is right there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is work on the display. So we're going to take the display bracket and we're going to attach the four standoffs. This is what the display looks like attached to the bracket. It has not been aligned yet. However, this is the orientation that it goes in with the connector on the left hand side which is on the inside of the cable. Okay, the display is installed. In KM3KM's instructions he says you can power it up and actually with the display on use that to center it. I just shone a light at it and you can see the active area boundaries and uh, I use that to adjust it on the X and the Y axes and we'll find out when we turn it on if that was good enough. And here's the inside. So that is good to go. The next step is the installation of the low pass filter board. Okay, so we have the low pass filter board in. There's four screws that go in from the bottom of the case to secure that in place on the standoffs. And here we have the trap. It is going to tie in here to RF in. And then the RF out is going to 
tie into this piece of coax which goes off to the antenna board. So let's solder those up and see how that comes out. Okay, so here we are. Both pieces of coax are soldered on. And you can see here's the trap. Goes to the RF input on the low pass filter board. And this connection over here, RF out. This travels up here and goes off to the antenna board. And so we're making progress. And the next thing we're going to do is put the uh, switches in. Here's a picture in the manual of the switch installation. And what they want us to do is install the switches and put tie wraps on them to keep them out of the way of the toroids. Here are the switches installed in the case. They look very nice. And let's take a peek inside. Per KM, 3KM's instructions, uh, the wires off the switch, both of them are zip tied and you have to rotate those and place them such that there is no contact between those wires and the toroids. So what I did was I moved the low pass filter board as far as it would go to the rear towards the fans and then I um, moved those until there was maximum clearance from the toroids. Okay, the next step is with the low pass filter shield installing four standoffs you can see there's the marking and there's the standoffs. There's the bottom side. That's how they install. Let's go ahead and put those on see what it looks like. Okay, here's the low pass filter shield with the standoffs installed. There's the top side. It says low pass filter shield. And basically the Arduino controller is going to sit on top of this shield the cable, control cable, that comes off the low pass filter is going to come through there. So let's go ahead and take this. Okay, there's the ribbon cable that connects onto the low pass filter board. Basically it just pushes right into that connector and then that's going to come up through the top of the low pass filter shield. This is what it looks like with the low pass filter shield installed. to the next step. Okay, the next steps here are to take the controller board and install two thermal pads on that square right there. And once those are on, install the controller board in that orientation. So here's what the two thermal pads look like attached to the bottom of the controller board. Basically they just stick one on top of the other and now we're going to go ahead and install the controller board. Okay, here's a view of the installed controller board. Okay, our next step here is to install the power socket on the rear of the chassis. So we got black, green, white, yellow with a piece of uh, shrink wrap over each of the wires. So let's go get that installed. Okay, there's the power socket installed. The yellow wire is soldered in. Uh, you have to solder very quickly so you don't melt the socket. And I did put a little tiny heat sink on the back of the um, terminal. And after I soldered it, I blew it down to cool it off as quickly as possible. And the next step is to put the heat shrink on, and then we'll move on to the metal terminal. Okay, there's the power socket. It's all wired in. Let's get the switching power supply in place. Lock it down, and then we'll put the ground wire on. So here's the installed power supply. The bracket goes over the top of the power supply. Here. Okay, so what I did was I hooked up all the cables. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, this was the power on switch. 
this is the operate switch these are the display connections yeah, one thing I might make note is when you install the display you want to make sure you put that connector into the side of the display um, over here <coughs> this one goes to the low pass filter goes right through the board this one goes to the back to the antenna switch Let's see over here we've got the two fan connections here we've got the wire that comes from the power supply comes in on the right side here and this this one right here goes off to the power unit so we're basically to the point where we've only got one more to hook up and that's these two connectors right here uh, one is on the controller it says to the power unit and the other one is on the power amplifier board that says to the controller you'll notice that that one only has five pins one of the pins is cut off and in the cable if you look at the ends of the cables one of the connectors has that pin in it so that can only go to this board there's a reference note in the instructions from KM3KM so these uh, the plugs are polarized and there is a pin in one and the one with the pin can only go to this power amplifier board. So here's the cable that we're talking about. So there's the cable we're talking about. So make sure when you put that cable on, you look inside this side of the connector. It's this one right here. You'll see there's a cutoff pin on the power amplifier board. And when you look inside that socket, that pin is actually in there. So that's it. It's all together. And what I'm going to do now is take a look at the wiring uh, diagram that uh, is provided by KM3KM and make sure that we've got everything zip tied and oriented the way that he shows it in his uh, diagram. So that's it. It's all together. Thank you to KM3KM for this beautiful design and for supplying all these parts. All I can tell you is I've done Mini kits in the past, heath kits, night kits, all kinds of kits, and KM3KM has certainly done the heavy lifting here. It makes this kit very easy to assemble. So I got the zip ties on. I don't think I have it quite as clean and pretty as he does, but uh, next step is we'll move on to the operating manual. We'll fire it up and test it out per his instructions.